Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some of the other tools to make flight plans inside of Little Nap Map. Uh, last time we showed you how to basically add waypoints directly from the map. Uh, one thing I did neglect to say is that uh, you can actually add custom waypoints. Uh, for example, if I were over here at uh, Simsbury, let's go ahead and start a waypoint there. I'll start my little flight here. Let's say I wanted to go see my old house or something like that. I'm just kind of randomly pick an old house here. Hmm, it looks like a good old house here. Mm, that looks like it's probably a nice uh, Well, let's say that my old house is right here. I can actually right click and I can actually add the position to the flight plan. So now I've gone ahead and actually created a custom waypoint that you can now use. So for those of you who like to go find your house and fly over to it, this is the absolute one of the quickest and easiest ways to do that. So let's go ahead and clean this all up and let's take a look at a couple different ways to make flight plans. So the first things first is uh, we took a look at how you did it with the graphics, which we just saw a moment ago. You can also create flight plans by entering the identifiers of any identifying object that you're interested in. I know that sounds redundant, but it actually works well. So to do that, come up here where it says create a new flight from description, click that and simply dial in where you're going and where you want to go. So for example, let's say I want to go to, from Bradley. I'm going to go to over to, I'll do a Pauling. We'll do MXE. We'll do BAL and we'll do KBAL. Let's say we're traveling down to a, a BWI rather. Let's say we're doing something like this on our flight today. So what I do now is after I type in all the identifiers, I can now select what mode I want to make it in. Let's do, call this IFR. And I'm going to click on read root description. What this will do is this will go ahead and analyze this and basically create the five waypoints necessary for it. I'm going to come down here and click the create flight plan and it gives me this nice little route down here. <laughs> I'm going down to BWI. Oh man, I've taken this flight way too many times. You don't want to know. <laughs> this is like my airliner basically just go flight. Anyway, so now I've got myself a pretty solid little view here that takes us all the way down to our destination. Now, of course, you can see over on this side, it's updated all of our different positions. And now we're ready to go ahead and basically fly the flight. We can come up here for the uh, our altitude. Uh, obviously, we're traveling to the west here, so it's got to be an even thousand. We're doing IFR, so 36,000 feet. That looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and export this over into Flight Simulator so you can kind of see exactly what this is going to look like. So we'll go ahead and export this one real quick. But before I do that, now some of you are probably going, well, this is super useful. You just export it over to Microsoft. We're good to go. A word of warning. If you intend on creating a nice complicated route that has a lot of different custom waypoints, if you change your starting position after you load the flight plan into Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's basically going to prevent you. It'll mess up your entire plan as it recalculates it. Uh, one of the safest ways to avoid this is if you actually zoom in on the chart all the way down, you want to pick a starting position that is not the airport. So for example, not the airport, not the runway, I should say. So for example, if I'm going to do parking 76, start your flight here instead of starting it at the airport itself. This will ensure that your aircraft starts with everything shut down and you're not on the runway and you can open it directly. Now, some really, 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 really hot shots, uh, more hot shots than I, trust me, will actually come down here and select their landing position as well. Let's say um, we're doing like Southwest or something and I'm gonna do gate five. I can actually come in here and say that this is my ultimate destination. So that now will go ahead and changes everything here to represent that. I'm actually gonna delete this one because this one makes no sense. So now my actual starting position is going to be a little bit different from, why is it starting at okay, KBIB? <laughs> I see what I did there. You got to be very cautious with this tool sometimes. So I think I accidentally did as destination. Sorry about that. Let's say departure. There we go. You can actually define exactly what gate you like to arrive at as well. But again, this is uh, more than effective enough as an actual procedure itself. So now that that's all set, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say file. I'm going to go ahead and say export to MSFS. Click right here. It's going to open up uh, your re rooming data here in case you're curious. IFR Bradley to BWI. I'm going to click save. So that's going to be one way you can go ahead and develop flight plans. Um, one of the things I always recommend is always go on places like FlightAware, and you can actually look up the name of the individual flight that you're interested in. So if I were to go pop on real quick, FlightAware, let's see how close I was today. Uh, let's say we're going, oh, let's say we're going from BDL, and we're going to BWI. Let's do a quick search. Uh, I was right, right? All right, Southwest 273. And you can actually copy paste the route right out of here. Go over here, create a new one. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and create a new one. Go to here to read, paste, read. And of course, it blows up on you because it doesn't know exactly what it is. Now, you're probably going, wait, why did it not work? I thought this works really, really well. Well, the reason it did not work is if you look really, really, really closely, you'll recognize this 
as well as this as actually being a procedure. So if I read the root description, you can see it blows up a little tiny bit here. It actually did a pretty nice job. It actually identified the star for us, and it was actually able to identify all the waypoints as well. But unfortunately, it forgot the BWL and it forgot the BWI. It's also giving me a warning that Bizex is not recognized. However, it recognized the Quebec airway. So if you actually come in here and I get rid of Bizex, nothing bad will happen. So let's go ahead and I'll read the root description. And it says, I cannot find Q75. So that doesn't find, that does not surprise me at all. That probably means we need to go find out what the J75 actually is. So read the root description, create flight plan. And now you can see it basically stole that little uh, plan right out of what actually we saw a minute ago and placed everything down through it directly. Now, the part that I'm a little interested in, I'm actually going to check this out real quick myself, is I'm curious what it was actually trying to lock itself onto. So what you can do is you can flip on the jetways and you can try to identify which one of the jetways it was trying to cross itself on. And definitely not Juliet 37. I think it was trying, there's Quebec 406 right there. I'm just trying to identify it, but I'm not going to go too carried away. But anyway, that's another really, really great way to use that particular technique because now you can actually do this. One final way to go ahead and create a flight plan, and I think this is really cool, is I can right-click on my destination, on my departure, and I can right-click on where I want to go. In this case, we're going down to BWI again. So I'm actually going to go ahead and read root description. We'll say no. We'll do it the nice lazy way. We'll do KBDL to KBWI. Read root description, press create flight plan, and then use a program built in that will automatically generate the flight plan for you. To do this, I'm simply going to come up here. There's a little button that says calculate flight plan. And now you can go ahead and dial in exactly what your desired everything is. So we're going to say departure to destination. We're going to come down here to cruise altitude, obviously 36,000 feet. Don't forget to click the adjust button after you type in this number. Now you can select what style of airways. You can tell it to avoid RNAV. Um, no, we're a 787. We can do RNAV. We can also use NATs and PACs and outs uh, Basically, this is for traveling across you know, the Atlantic Ocean here. And we can also say, do we want to go direct to our destination? Or do we prefer to go ahead and travel to our destination using um, uh, all airways? Obviously, do what you have to do. You can also order order this program to only use radio nav aids to get us all the way down there for those of you who are a little more traditional. I'm going to go ahead and press the calculate button and uh, it's going to go ahead and calculate a really, really efficient and legal route to get us down to our destination. In this case, it takes off from Bradley, goes to Big O, takes our climb, goes all the way up, goes to Birid, Hagen, Pensy, Figus, and takes us all the way down to BWI. Now you're looking at this route going, man, that was really efficient. I like that. So, um, what about procedures? Ah, I knew you were going to ask me about that. Procedures can be added to any point of the flight plan. And this is, again, one of the reasons why this program is so darn useful. So what I can do is I can come up to Bradley, I can right-click on it, and I can actually have it display information. And you'll notice there's an option here that says Display Departure Procedures. If I click on that, it's going to open up this little box over here, which is going to show us all the procedures. Now, what's so cool here is if I click on one of them, it will visually show you what that procedure looks like. So like I can see here, um, we have this one, I believe this is uh, Sid, this is Coastal 6. Yeah, this will take us right down here. So if I wanted to do a route that comes kind of across New York City, I could select that one. But notice each one of these has the departure runway. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wind real fast here. Let's go put it on. Uh, the wind seems to be coming out of this direction, which means we're probably going to be preferring runway tree tree today. So let's say we're using the Bradley 2 as our departure procedure. If we want to use this, you can actually click on it. It'll give you all the critical information about it. We can just right click on it and we can simply insert it into our plan. So now we've added our departure procedure. Now, if we scoot all the way down here to BWI, we can go ahead and plan our approach as well. Now I can go actually right click on this real quick. Show me arrival procedures. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, we have a lot of good fun ones to choose from. I think I'm a fan of the Raven 6. Again, it's been a little while since I've flowed down here. So we'll go ahead and zip through these and kind of pick one that makes mathematical sense. Let's see, for these folks, uh, how's the wind hitting them? Uh, that's something we definitely want to know before we get too carried away here. Go ahead and get some, <laughs> I'll be back. You know, I just had to file a bug report. I haven't had to do that in ages. <laughs> All right, let's go back to what we're doing here. So basically, uh, take a look here. The wind seems to be coming out of the northwest. So we're going to go ahead and probably have to end up with 3-3 over here too. So uh, Raven 6 is going to be down here, which isn't too bad. Let's see if uh, Trish... Ah, Trish looks good. Let's go ahead and right-click on that. I'm going to go ahead and insert into my flight plan. So now the flight plan is going to automatically ask us for what runway we're interested in landing at. In this case, um, since uh, right is going to be closest to us, I'm going to pick tree, tree, right. And unfortunately, it's going to give us this whoa kind of a thing right here, which I'm not so thrilled about from a mechanical perspective. That's going to be a little irritating to kind of zip through. And again, this is what happens a lot of times when you use the automatic generator. So what I'm actually going to do is work backwards to find this a waypoint called ensue and delete it because it's ensuing problems. And I'm also going to go ahead and delete Figos as well because it's just going to get my way. 
Nice. Keep in mind, uh, if you're working on bad sim, uh, you have to be legal about these things, so kind of be careful. All right, so after we've picked our star, we can come down here and actually pick our approach. Uh, like I said, we're going to do a tree tree right. We'll go ahead and do an ILS because everybody loves ILSs. Go ahead and right click on it, insert approach, and bam. And now I have this glorious, glorious flight plan here that literally gets me all the way down to the ground. Oh, I appreciate that a lot. And it also, of course, calculates things like my top of climb. It's going to calculate things like uh, what my uh, terminal rivals are going to be. And everything is in a nice, neat little bow ready to rock. Now, to make it even more ready to rock, I'm actually going to come up here to press file. I'm going to export flight plan. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is a IFR. I'm going to call this one 2. I'm going to press save so that you can see the visual differences once you get into the flight simulator. All right, over in the simulator, we're going to go ahead and come down to load and save. Notice I've already picked the airplane I intend to fly this with. I highly recommend, by the way, that you do things like set all your options up here as well before you get too carried away. Tap the load save, press load, and we have two to take a look at. Uh, the first one, of course, is going to be the one that we designed a little bit earlier. Go ahead and double click on that one. And you can see it worked literally perfectly. It imported everything that we needed to. Remember, this is the one before we got fancy with arrivals and departures and everything along those lines. You'll notice also, if I zoom way, way in, is it's starting us on runway six. So if I want to actually come in here and set as departure, notice it can potentially break your flight plan. So be very very cautious about making changes like that, especially if I want to be like, oh, I actually want to go ahead and uh, use Coastal 8 here. And you can see how it slowly can uh, dent up all that hard work that you did just a few minutes ago. So just kind of be mindful about that. That's just kind of a, something you're going to run into a few times. Let's go ahead and open up that second flight plan now. Let's go ahead and go back. Uh, we want to go load and save here. I'm going to press on the load button real quick. We're going to go pop down to that number two. I believe it's going to be this one right here. I'm going to do that in just a second. And you can see this one now includes all of that hard work we did as far as our arrivals and our approach to landing. As a matter of fact, if I zoom in all the way, you can see my incredibly bizarre little turn here, which I'm not looking forward to doing in a 787. The other thing I noticed is the flight simulator wind is completely different than the wind that we actually had over on this side of things. So you kind of got to be mindful of that as well. So um, again, that's going Going to happen to you. If we jump into the simulator though, all right, here we are in the simulator. Now, the first thing that makes people panic is uh, now that we've imported all this hard work, we've done all this data entry and all these kind of things, is that uh, they take a look here and they come down to the legs button and they go boop and they go, oh, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Blah, blah, blah. So one of the interesting things about the way that the FMS system in Flight Simulator works is it actually simplifies your route and uh, sucks up a lot of things that don't need to be there when it displays things on the legs page. So believe it or not, our route actually is here. So if you press the uh, route button up at the top, you'll notice I have five pages here. But when I press legs, I only have three items. So if I click on the route button right here and I come up to the next page, you might have to pull this out of the way if it gets in your way. Goodbye, speed brake lever. Nobody likes you. Press the next button. Now you can see that all of my hard work is actually quite visible here, page after page after page of all my hard work. And there's no discontinuities, which is kind of a nice vacation. I almost never get that. And you can see all my individual waypoints have all been entered. We had no reason to panic in the first place. So again, don't worry about that too, too much. As a matter of fact, you know, if you came up here to your little range selection, we actually came in here and zoomed out a little tiny bit here. Bop, 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 bop. You can see that all of your waypoints are indeed visible on your map. You didn't lose anything. Do not panic. It's fine. It's fine. I swear it's fine. Don't worry about it too much. But like I said, everything is here. Now, of course, if you were silly and came in here and said, oh, let me add my own new leg, you're going to blow up your entire flight plan. But those are known issues. Those are known flight simulator issues. And those will most likely be addressed later on, probably with future patches or with some fancy payware. Hopefully this video has been helpful as far as uh, doing flight plans inside of a uh, little nav map there. Uh, next time what we'll do is we'll take a look at uh, using custom waypoints a little aggressively. Enjoy.